Hi! In this film, we're just going to consider one way of going about composition. And we're going to think about how to start from a given chord scheme. Because one way of going about the job of composing, whatever style you want to write in, is to come up with a melody and then to think about what the chords might be that fit it. But another way of doing things is to start the other way around. Come up with a chord scheme that works and then work out what you're going to do with the chord scheme. So just as a straightforward example of this, I've got a chord scheme on the board. We'll work in C major for the time being as well, just because it's the easiest key to think in. But of course you could transfer this to any other major key or to any other minor key. So chord one, followed by chord six, followed by chord four, followed by chord five, followed by chord one. Or to put that another way, a chord of C, followed by a chord of A minor, followed by a chord of F, followed by a chord of G, followed by a chord of C. And you'll notice that in the light of the earlier films on this topic, we've got three chords on here that are primary chords. One, four, five, one. They're quite strong chords. Six is one of our secondary chords, because in a major key, six is one of those minor chords. You'll remember that in a major key, one, four, and five are major chords, but chords two and three and six are minor chords. Hence, this is an A minor chord. So you might just want to begin by just having a think about what these chords are. I've purposely chosen this chord scheme because it's one that some people might be familiar with if you've ever done something like this. so on because that is this chord scheme. So here's chord one, a chord of C, so that's C, E and G. Here's chord six, the A minor chord, so that's A, C and E. Here's chord four, the F chord, F, A and C. Here's chord five, the G chord, G, B and D. And then back to chord one again, C, E and G. Now, having found those basic chords, of course, you can do anything you like with them. So let's have a look at this chord one for a moment. There's the chord one, the C chord. Now, obviously, you could strum this chord on a guitar. That's fine. If you're doing it on a keyboard, you could think, well, there's my basic triad. And I can turn that into a chord as long as I'm using those three notes. So I could have a chord one that goes like this. Now, you notice this time, I've got four notes on the go, but all of these notes are C, E, or G. In other words, they're all notes that belong to chord one. So at the bottom I've got a C, then I've got a G, then I've got an E, and then I've got another C at the top. But I could just easily, as easily, organize the chord like this. So now I've got a C at the bottom, then another C, and then an E, and then a G at the top. Or I could organise it like this. So I've got a C at the bottom, then a G, then a C, then an E. And it doesn't have to be a four part chord. I could have a much bigger chord like this. Lots of notes on the go there, but you notice they're all C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E. So they're all built from the notes of this chord. So once you've got the notes C, E, G for that first chord, you could have three notes, four notes, seven notes, you could spread them out, you can do anything you like with them as long as you're using those notes. If you use other notes then of course they will clash with that chord and then the music takes on a much more dissonant kind of characteristic. When you want to move on to the next chord you do just the same. So here's chord six, A, C, and E, or a chord of A minor, and as long as you're using those notes, A, C, E, you could have that chord arranged any way you like. Here are different examples. And you can hear as those chords are 
used in different ways, they create slightly different musical effects. So you have to decide what kind of effect you want to do. Now, in the example that we started with, all I was doing there was using these chords as my bass line. So I had C, A, F, G, C. And that's what we're going to do for the time being, because obviously those are the bottom notes of those chords. Now, when I played this, all I was doing was taking the chord, the basic triad in my right hand. So there's one, six, four, five, back to one. Or C, A minor, F, G, C. And I could just present that in its absolutely basic form like this. Here's the C chord, the A minor chord, the F chord, the G chord, the C chord. Now what makes that piece that we've started with slightly more interesting is that the right hand chords are broken up and they're given just a bit of rhythm. So instead of just having plain chords, I break up the right hand chord. Makes it sound slightly more interesting, doesn't it? Just to break up the chords and to have that slightly dotted rhythm. And then, of course, um, if you've ever did play this at school, maybe, uh, you might have done something slightly different with it the next time round. Change the rhythm, but to have the kind of chords in their neat form. And so on. And then, of course, somebody might have improvised a melody over the top of those chords. And so on. So it's possible, isn't it, to use the chords in their straight form. It's possible to spread them into four parts or seven parts, to have the chord high, to have the chord low, to put some rhythm into it, to break up the chord, to improvise a melody that goes over the top of that chord. You see, this is the basic business of how we work from a given chord scheme. And of course, you can create any kind of mood you want to, or write in any kind of style you want to. So for example, if you wanted to use that scheme and you wanted to write something that maybe sounded like um, an earlier piece, maybe from Baroque times or something, you could use this bass line and have this sort of chord outline and maybe have a melody in the right hand that's got a few twiddles and trills, ornaments and things to make it sound a little bit Baroque. So you could do something like this. That's using the same chord scheme, but sounds rather different in that style, doesn't it? You could have a system where you have something called an Alberti bass. Now, this was something that was very common in what we call the classical period. So composers like Mozart and Haydn and people did this kind of thing, where you take your chord, here's your C chord, your chord one, and you break it up like this. So you go bottom, top, middle, top bottom, top, middle, top. So they might have done this by going like this. Chord one, six, four, five, one. And that's called an Alberti bass. So you could use something like an Alberti bass and then maybe come up with a melody that goes over the top of it. Now that sounds completely different to the tune we started with, but it's still using exactly the same scheme. You could decide you're going to use those chords, but you want to change the time signature. We've been working in four beats and a bar so far, haven't we? Well, you could organize things with three beats and a bar and have something that sounds a bit more like a waltz. How about this? So 
that's using exactly the same scheme and I'm kind of using block chords as a little bit of a melody at the top there but I've organized it with three beats and a bar so you've now got something that's a bit more waltzy. You could have something that's got slightly more punchy rhythm in it that would give you some basis for a more sort of upbeat composition you know. <laughs> very different kind of style wouldn't it and again you could float some kind of melody over the top of that or you could have something that's much more relaxed that creates a calmer mood that maybe has got a slightly more of a kind of ballad feel to it simply by slowing down the tempo and using the same chord so I could do something like this So you see, you can make this, the music sound so completely different in its style and in its character simply by changing the speed, by changing the meter, in other words, the number of beats in a bar, and by organizing the texture in different ways. In other words, the way we use these chords in different formations, either as block chords, or broken chords, possibly Alberti that we talked about or by spreading the chords out wide across the keyboard all things that would completely change the mood of your composition be it an instrumental composition or a song but this is just explaining the whole business of how you would work from a given chord scheme so if you wanted to compose in this way the starting point would be the chords. So you might decide which key you want to be in. Do you want to be in a major key or in a minor key? You might organize all the chords for the key that you've chosen. Just have a little think about which are the primary chords, which are the secondary chords. So you're probably going to use a few more primary chords than secondary chords. But then you might organize some kind of scheme like the one we've got here as the basis for something and it won't sound like much in the first instance but just get used to the progression of chords and you'll discover that when you kind of do this by sound that some chords progress to others rather better or you might particularly like a particular progression from this chord to that chord that you want to work with and from there once you've got the chord scheme work out what you want to do with the melody work out what you want to do with the chords whether they're block chords broken chords and the sort of characteristics that we've just been thinking about. So I hope that gets you started on how to compose from a chord scheme.